on the press bar. Hello and welcome to 100 and Central Fieldhouse. This afternoon, 100 and Central's gymnastics team will take on East Brunswick here on HCTV. And well, as always, starting off with Vault. And uh, I'm George Urquhart alongside Callie Colton. And Callie, is there any reason why tonight won't be business as usual here against East Brunswick? I think tonight is a great night to ask that question. A lot of our girls have been working really hard on bunch of their upgrades and you know their harder skills that they haven't put into their routines quite yet in competition so they're trying all of the day we're really just throwing out everything we have this is our last home meet before we go to sectional so it's going to be some really great practice you'll see some really cool skills that you haven't seen before here all right so i'm assuming you guys are just throwing those out there because i mean, it's tonight in standings wise you know maybe isn't that big of a deal considering you're already you know pretty set for sectionals i think so this is a this is a pretty solid team we're going up against, so can't be too many mistakes, but it's really good to give the girls an opportunity to try all of these skills in their routines, in their competitions at, you know, a smaller meet in a gym we're more comfortable with, rather than if you're doing it at sectionals for the first time, it might be a lot more nerve-wracking. So this kind of just builds that confidence and, you know, lets them get a little trial run before we do it for the real thing. So it's there. Voss just finished her second vault. Very, very good. Half on, full off. Hard to tell who's going next right now. Looks like. Looks like we have Ava Sutphin up next to vault. She typically does a Yurchenko layout. Round off onto the board, handspring onto the vault, layout off. So even, even this music might be a little different tonight as well. <laughs> Always variation. Love to cater to everyone. You see Ava starts very far back on the runway. Gives her a little more of a running start. Wow, a gorgeous vault. She really got so much air there, just perfectly straight. We do struggle sometimes at other gyms, especially smaller gyms, if their vault runways are shorter because it means we have to you know, adjust the steps, the amount of steps that we take. And when you're running full speed and jumping and just hurtling yourself into this pretty tall stationary object, it's a um, <laughs> little nerve wracking to make that switch last minute. Uh, but they've handled it very well in the past. And it makes one thing a little easier when you're competing at home is you always know that your runway will be just the length you need, you need it to be. Well, it looks like good enough execution to only have to do one there. So a gorgeous vault from Sutphin. Up next, we have Nicole Pagano. She should be doing a Yurchenko Pike. Super powerful run into that. And a great vault. Well done. Again, with the height. If I had to guess, I'd say she's only doing one of those. Looks like they're talking about it right now. Looks like I would be correct. Only one vault from her. Really gorgeous vault. Great execution on all those. So good strong start on vault as always here for Central. See what East, Brins East Brunswick brings to the table. We're, we're starting off strong over here too. Oh, um, absolutely. <laughs> I always say, you know, what's a meet without something going a little wrong? Yep. Um, last meet we had the recorded version, our live, so can't make as many mistakes, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> It'll always happen. We're, you know, we're only human. It's always going to be some slip-ups. I'm really excited to see what East Brunswick has in store. We don't know very much about them, and 
according to according to my memory, I don't remember going against them last year. So this is kind of a new team for me to watch. I feel like in, in most sports, we really don't face East Brunswick. I don't think we've ever swam against them. I don't think I mean, it's football they face them maybe in the playoffs. And hockey, I don't think they face I don't even know if East Brunswick has a hockey team. So, you know, I, I do a lot of you. sports and, um, you know, I, I commentate a lot of sports and I feel like this is the first time I've ever commentated uh, a game match or meet against uh, East Brunswick, so. Yeah, super excited to see what they have in store. Plus, little this will give us a little hint into maybe what our sectionals and our state will states will look like. I'm sure we've gone against them in sectionals or states in the past, but um, this is definitely our first one-on-one, -on -one, and it's a great introductory to just one more of our opponents. So, for the people who don't know, after this vault, obviously. Got a lot of height on that half on, half off. And you see, she starts very far up usually for vault so that's super interesting to see how she can build that much power in a few steps so as i was saying how how does sectionals actually work so um you know for me i'm familiar with swimming where you know it's, it's just more dual meets um how does it how does it work for you guys sectionals is one big meet we're broken up into two meets for section for sectionals of everybody in our section um, and I believe that most of the people that we're going to see at sectionals are people who we haven't competed against before so that'll be really interesting to see but we're broken up into two meets uh, it's usually one earlier in the day and then one a little later and it's you and I want to say probably about five or six other teams something like that um, that might be an overstatement, but uh, it's definitely more more teams than just meets like this. And then I believe it's the top five teams from each section go on to states. And then in states, is it a similar format, you know, once you get past the section? Yeah, same kind of thing. You're competing with, you know, at least one team on each event. And, you know, you still get one touches, those little warm-up periods right before your event, um, in addition to warming up all of your skills in the beginning. Yeah, sure, wait time definitely becomes a lot more of a factor at meets like that. Definitely, um, yeah. Especially with so much at stake. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if it's a, because states is a bigger meet specifically, uh, for states we do a warm up compete format where we warm up compete, warm up compete. So thankfully you're not doing all of your warming up at once, uh, so it's a little tighter to the event that you're doing, a little less wait time, so you're still pretty warmed up by the time you have to go, which I think is definitely the way to go for bigger meets like that. And it um, you know, really makes you feel more comfortable with what you're doing. I say tonight warm-up time is definitely going to be a factor for you, considering it's varsity only meet tonight. So yep. you, you won't be – are you doing anything before floor tonight? No, sir, just floor. I believe I do get a one-touch on floor, um, which is <laughs> great, again, with the, you know, the warm-up time really – <laughs> looking to get that extra pass in before routine, but other than that, nope. I'm gorgeous, half on full off. I'm here as long as needed. <laughs> happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you, so. Are you trying anything new or special on the floor routine tonight? Not tonight. A little too close for comfort to me for when I got my skill but I did just get an upgrade and I in fully intend on debuting it at sectionals super excited new opening pass should get me a few extra tents so I can't wait to compete that it's been my dream pass since I saw Ava do it for the first time last year and so I'm finally working that which I'm super excited about so East Brunswick will start on bars here I'll call them bars <laughs> properly this yes. time. I, I um, appreciate that. Well, we, we won't know until the beam whether I'll call the beam a bar. bar. <laughs> we, had, we had a little bit of a laugh about that. I practiced the other day, and you're, you're trying your best, and you're doing so great at it, and, you know, mistakes <laughs> happen, but everybody did laugh a little bit when you said one of our girls was up for the bar oh, yeah. when she's mounting beam. Up for the bar. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it again, is a bar. slamming into the in, board in on defense, floor. Oh, oh, that one. <laughs> that one I've been shown by multiple people. <laughs> We're not even gymnasts. Like, oh, I'm really? Just walking the hallway, and someone will just be like, "Look, this is really funny," and I'm like, "Thanks." 
thanks a lot for that. Well, it's great to know we have so many viewers <laughs> and so many fans. Don't Shout worry, out to everyone I, I wouldn't watching. do this if I, could, I couldn't take that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's I a very important thing to have in the film industry is a little yeah, bit of resilience. You can't. You can't come out here and be completely serious all the time. I'm, I'm doing something that I don't know anything about. I'm obviously going to say the wrong things. And for me, especially as a swimmer, um, you know, sometimes our stuff gets commentated. And it's absolutely hilarious to watch those back because, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, they're really inaccurate. And it's, you know, it's, it's hard to learn sports like this that maybe you don't get as much... Um, Exposure oh, to, exposure. Yeah. yeah. I was just about to say, I think we've bonded a little bit over <laughs> both of our odd sports and yeah. people not always really getting that. Um, but it's definitely interesting to see, especially because there's so many technical names in gymnastics. And, you know, I've talked to my friends about the sport before, and I, I say something about vaulting, and I'm like, and I, and I did my vault, and they look at me just so blank, and they're like, what's a vault? So even just little things like that, like main events, disregarding skills entirely, just main <laughs> events, a lot of people don't know. So it's always a fun conversation to have, and as you all can tell from the amount that I've done this, I'm a big fan of talking, so I'm always happy to explain. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're here to explain, because um, I did know what a vault was when I came in the room. I will okay, say that. Okay, that's better than I, most. I, I think I got a little bit of a leg up there. <laughs> um, but, and, and I, knew, I knew all the names of the events, but still, Again, still it's, it's a big learning curve. That, oh, definitely, but that's, a, that's better than most <laughs> people I know um, who would be able to do that. And if it ever makes you feel any better, if you put me to commentate a swimming meet, I... I'd be like, oh, the the water looks cool. <laughs> like, I have <laughs> absolutely nothing. So I think you got a leg up on me commentating gymnastics. I will say it's a little simpler to com commentate swimming, mainly because it's just a race. Um, you know, Understood, yeah. it's just a race. There are, you know, when you get to penalties and stuff, that's where it gets confusing. And, you know, how the stroke actually has to be carried out, that's where it gets confusing. But I couldn't have, even, couldn't have even told you there were penalties. So I've learned something new today. Well, you just get DQ'd. I mean, that's the whole, you do something a little bit wrong. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like gymnastics. You. Yeah, just like gymnastics. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, no, coaches tend to be pretty understanding. You know, everybody has their off days, and not everybody can nail every skill every day, and they're very, very understanding about that. So, so first up for East Brunswick. Toe shoot to high bar, one of my favorite skills. Gets you that flight requirement, and they're super fun to watch. With it being just varsity, we don't have JV to pan over to. Um, but still nonstop action here. I mean, we just had that little break there, but I don't know. It didn't feel all that long. No, just, you know, keep on moving. That's what they always saw us at gymnastics meets. The judges give us a little a little kind of announcement before every meet, just, you know, what they expect for conduct and stuff. And it's, you know, very standard, but they always say that. It's just keep the keep the meet moving. Once you're done with the vault, start chalking up for bars, just whatever you can to make everything go a little faster. And especially for East Brunswick, got here a little late today. They're doing a great job at picking it back up. Yeah, you can never quite rely on... 287, which is, I believe, the road they'll have to take to get here um, and back. And sometimes week week afternoons, it can just be horrible. I know because all my family is from that area, um, or my extended family. They're not from there, but they live there right now. Um, and driving out there, it, it can be a little rough. So <laughs> absolutely, especially around this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's really a fun time on the New Jersey highways. Especially. It's always a fun time on the New Jersey Oh, hours. absolutely. Especially, like, dead middle of the week. Uh, you know, just about, they probably left their school at about 4 p.m. Not uh, earlier, but not the standard probably time to be like driving. more like 3.15, yeah. I would say. She's hitting those handstands just gorgeous. You see another toe shoe. Every once in a while, teams have um, certain skills that the whole team kind of does, especially on bars you see some cut catches if they're common in teams like one person have it, has them and everyone has them wow. wow double back on the first girl to compete is definitely a little intimidating but i don't think it's anything that we can't overcome she had a lot of power in that routine too i, I don't know if it's just me and my silliness but i uh I, it almost looked like she overshot the bar a little bit um when she transitioned and kind of came to a stop and had to rebuild her momentum. 
Yep, that's an uh, issue with toe shoot sometimes is you need to come at it from a from an angle in which you see Nicole on her one touch. One of her upgrades she's been working really hard on, but it's super tough skill. It doesn't always hit. Um, something you see a lot in toe shoots is that your legs need to be behind you when you grab the high bar, and that's actually a really hard thing to achieve. It's a lot of core strength, um, so you can go just right into that next skill and don't, doesn't always work the way you want to, especially in competition when your only thought is just kind of to make it and full send. Sometimes full sending is almost too much sending. So we saw that there, but she recovered very, very beautifully. I think she slammed a little hard into the uh, boards. In, into the boards? <laughs> into the beam? Into the beam. <laughs> into the bar. Yeah, that, that <laughs> vault hit really must have taken a toll on her. <laughs> My goodness. Little so bar adjustment action happening. It's just as exciting as people flipping, you know? Oh, yeah, really. This is the best part of the process. Um, you'll see at the at the end of our meets, we um, we pack up the gym. So this is not what the field house usually looks like. We kind of spread it out just to make everything a little more spacious. So when we put the mats back every day, we take all of the mats from vault and we stack them on top of each other. And the whole team helps and we put the big mat over our head and we all walk it over. It's very heavy. You think with 16 people it'd be lighter, but... It, it is it is pretty heavy, and it's like the parents' favorite thing to watch. We have so many videos of just us moving mats. So I think it is kind of the main event. I mean, it looks heavy to me standing here, so. <laughs> Could you imagine gym class if all this was just left spread out? It would be interesting. Oh, yeah, the, the Project Adventure kids would definitely have something to say about it. I think I think I'd enjoy gym class if we had some of these left out. I mean, I might severely injure myself. Yeah, there's a reason that some of this <laughs> isn't left out. Um, I'm I've always been jealous. I've talked to, you know, my mom and people of her generation, and they always talk about how they got to do gymnastics in gym class. I have to do everybody else's sports in gym class, and none of them have to do mine. Like I've always wanted to have that opportunity to do gymnastics in gym class. It just sounds like a blast. This is Ava's upgrade. It is a piked Jaeger, super difficult, and then right into her pack salto. Definitely a huge skill. Usually not something you see w until you get to college gymnastics, so really just highlights how talented she is as a gymnast. Uh, it looked look like a pretty sketchy one touch there. And <laughs> we get right back to the bar after she does that flip. Oh, it's it's definitely scary, and it's it's basically a blind flip for most of it. You cannot see the bar until maybe the very end, so it's definitely a scary skill. Again, not something you see until you're watching collegiate most times, so um, I know it's something that she's been working on for quite a bit at club, and she just finally brought it here, so we're super happy to see her working on it. So I think this is... East Brunswick's fourth. I'm not sure. I think you're right. I'm not sure if one of their gymnasts was a one-touch or if they're just... Hmm. That is so interesting. Wow. I've never seen that before. Uh, usually for a reverse flyaway, which is what that was, the girl will go about all of her high bar routine, you know, the usual facing way and then she'll just turn around for her reverse flyaway but to see her uprises on the other side of the bar was really a shock that was a super cool routine definitely unique <laughs> definitely yeah I've, I've seriously never seen that before uh, reverse flyaways are rare enough in and of themselves so that was a super cool one to watch well if you've never seen it before then I definitely haven't <laughs> I didn't think I had so Learn something new every day in this sport. I swear that's why, I, that's why I really love once you get into the higher levels and the you know high school gymnastics. You get to customize your routine because usually in lower contemporary gymnastics you don't get to customize it as much. You kind of do the same routine as all your teammates. That was a gorgeous handstand pirouette. Really stayed in the handstand for that. You don't really get to customize your routine as much, so that's why I'm a big fan of um, watching high school and you know, upper levels and collegiate because it's all very personalized. It's like Mr. J just split the East Brunswick 
squad over there just so we could see the bars a little better. Thank you, Mr. J. Seeing some one touches here. That is Jenna with her giant, giant flyaway. Definitely an upgrade for her this year. She's a freshman, but I've um, seen her compete on club for quite a bit, and she's made tremendous progress. So this will be the final competitor for East Brunswick, I believe. I think I'm 100% sure on this. I, th I believe you're right. Great free hip out of those uprises. I'm not even sure what I just saw. I believe it was a layout flyaway with a half twist, but... Again, not something you see very often. Really appreciate East Brunswick for bringing in those unique skills. So basically, zero bounce on that landing at all, too. Just really, the, stuck it. the control there was awesome. You always love a cold stick. It's so satisfying to watch. Every once in a while, I'll see a girl in the gym, and she'll do her skill, just stick it, and then just kind of stand there and just start talking to her teammates, you know. Like, this is nothing for her. And it's just so satisfying to watch. And a good stick really just elevates your routine always ups the confidence a little more. Super great to see. Jenna Willigan is going to be the first up on Central. She is a freshman this year. We were just talking about her. And she's made some tremendous progress. At least in the time that I have been in the gym, I don't think I've seen her on bars, so interesting to see what she brings to the table. She's definitely competed um, for us at a few meets, but I would say la uh, lineups are kind of fluid depending on what team we're going against. They, you know, change with how the gymnasts are feeling and, you know, whether or not we need to put out full lineups. So it is definitely great to see some different competitors every once in a while give people a chance to compete events that they might not always do but Jenna's pretty constant on bars she's a very consistent gymnast great free hip hip and her cast to handstand two giants just gets right over the bar like it's nothing <laughs> and a good layout flyway a little bit of trouble on the landing She's been working on those a bunch this season. I know a lot of girls who are just incredible on bars, and the scariest part of their routine is their flyaway. And they'll have, like, these incredible huge skills that kind of just make you stop dead in their tracks, and then they need to call their coach over to spot their flyaway. It's always a big mental block for gymnasts. Well, she had to take a seat there, so, I mean, <laughs> I <don't laughs> sometimes know. it just happens. I, that happens for me when happens. I'm just walking around, though. So oh, me too. Sometimes definitely. Sometimes the earth is like, you know, come here for a second. Oh, absolutely. And it, and just got to go. really connect with the ground sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of routines, you just get to a point where you kind of have to take a seat. Um, I've, I've done that on quite a few beam dismounts, and I land fully, and I just got to sit down. You know, sometimes the legs are a little too tired to keep up with the sport. So you got to <laughs> gotta let your body do what it has to do. That would be beam, not bars, right? That would be beam. Or the bar. It's the bar. Mm, no, that would be beam. Mm -hmm. Beam. beam. <laughs> <laughs> the bar singular. <laughs> it's a little funny to me. I mean, it's kind of a bar. It's. I'm sorry, but look at it. That's a bar. Bars That's are. A, that is a suspended bar. But bars are circular. That's my only critique. Yeah, you're right. Well, either way, those are the bars. That is the beam. And I had a little <laughs> trouble with that last time. So. <laughs> we, we, you know pick on George every once in a while because he knows so much about all of the stuff that we don't know about that we got to <laughs> we gotta even it out somehow. I think, it, I think it's fair. It's, it's totally fair. I mean, it's I'm fair. coming in here. <laughs> You're very well educated I'm on all your best. sports. This is Olivia Silver. She's a sophomore. Great free hip handstand from her. Good control on that squad on. And just 
right over in our Giants. Gorgeous execution, really great routine for Liv. She's a super fun personality to have on the team and she's so incredibly hardworking. She works every event at every practice and she's always the last one to get her assignments done. And she's just always, always on top of it. Really a, a, an inspiration to watch. Isabella Yuzon is up next. She is a sophomore. It's a very strong sophomore class representation on this. <laughs> I, I'd like to think so. I think you guys, the majority, are sophomores. Uh, as a sophomore myself, I might be a little biased, but we had a really, really great lineups this year and last year. And last year, I remember especially because we were all freshmen, and most of our varsity lineup was freshmen, which is not something you see a lot. I guess we just got a really, really good year this year, but um, it should be a great next few years with these girls and to see what you know everybody can improve on and what the new gymnasts bring to the team. I mean, you guys having a great year this year, and this is something that I believe will wholeheartedly believe will continue next season. Um, I believe that too. I I really strongly agree with you. Still great. a young team for the most part. I mean, oh yeah, all of these girls have at least two seasons left in them, if not going on to college. Great Giants from Issa really hits that handstand in a really straight position and a good stick on her flyaway. Really beautiful routine. But yeah, all of these girls still have, I think, a lot of gymnastics left in them, so I'm really excited to see what they do. One of them is Ava Sutphin, who's up next. Who's, I mean, she's just been great this year. And She's been great every year. Every year. <laughs> I can say that with full confidence. She is just killer to watch. She's such a talented gymnast. And, you know, this is her thing. She's put so much work and time and energy into this. And, again, just a, a huge inspiration and really, really found what she was good at and stuck with it. And it's really apparent in all of her routines. She's an incredible gymnast. I'm sure she's going on to college. I'm sure she's already being scouted. So it's super, super great we can have her on this team. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Ava currently has the highest all-around in the state right now. And a meter or two ago, she just made a school record for the highest score on vault ever in, at Central, a 9-8. She's got a new skill in this routine, so we'll see how she does. Well, she's a gymnast who consistently scores above 9, so... Yes, and she caught it. Sorry, a little break in my professionalism there. I'm so excited I mean, for I, her. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Jaeger and her pack salto. <laughs> <laughs> and she should finish up the rest of this routine just a breeze. She's been doing giants for, I'd like to think, longer than I've been in this sport. So. Unbelievable. Gorgeous. The height. That was such a beautiful routine from Ava. You can see my whole team going over to hug her. We're so proud of her. She did really great. And that that was perfection right there. I don't, I don't know what score that's going to get, but absolutely, I cannot wait to see the score on that one. Sometimes, you know, I'm not a judge, but truly, in some routines, I can find nothing to deduct. So, I have never seen I've never seen a ten. Uh, Mr. Johnson just asked. I've seen very close. Uh, Ava got a nine eight on bars last year at sectionals, and then her nine eight this year on. On vault. I've seen some that are really close. I've seen some that I thought were a 10, but again, I'm, I'm not a judge. It's it's almost never on high school. We were looking back in the records um, for all of the teams in our section that go back to, you know, 1990s um, for Central and for all the other teams, and we didn't see one 10. And maybe they aren't allowed to assess a 10? I. In a lot of high school routines your starting value is not a 10. You have certain requirements that you need to fulfill. Like it, it's something we call full bonus, which means you have all of the skills you need. You, on bars, for example, you need a handstand, you need a flight skill, which is that pack salto from Ava, uh, or that Jaeger, or you'll see a ganger coming up from Nicole. Well, and, like you need a, and you need a direction change, so things like that. 985, nine, eight, eight. wow. I think that's the best I've ever seen Ava get on bars. That's incredible. Nicole has a big connection here. 
Oh, and she makes it. Executes wow. that as well. <laughs> wow, sorry. I get the slip in professionalism, but that was so incredible. They've been working so hard, and it's so great to see all that hard work pay off. There's another one. Wow. Truly just wow. That was a great routine. So, so proud of them both. <laughs> a big moment for the team here, we see. And Nicole Pagano will definitely be a big loss um, for the team. But I truly wish she should have. She could have come earlier and stayed longer. Um, but we're so so grateful to have her this year. Uh, my coach Alexa has been wanting her on the team since freshman year. So the fact that she had time to do this now is really just an honor to all of us. Nine, nine seven, seven nine, nine seven, seven from Nicole. Great score. Really such a strong start to this to this meet. First up for 100 and Central, we have Brooklyn LaSalle. She is a senior and one of our captains this year. So is she the one who has a background in dance? Or Danica would be the one who has a background in dance. Okay, so I was, okay, so this is, this is, there's been a dispute about this. Okay. There's a dispute about this. I'm the dispute is that, so last time I brought, I brought Evan Burlinger out because I knew he had a little bit of background in gymnastics, put him on the mic with me for the floor routine. I through that stat up there that that Danica had you know a little bit of background in dance and he went she never did dance and I went what <laughs> so really it's well, interesting you know, little contradiction there I, I don't know see I'd like to admit defeat here but I clearly remember her talking about it but you know I'm not always a reliable source so I could be wrong I mean I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> who's reliable or not I, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I don't know. No, thank you. I'll, I can fact check that. Gorgeous Cartwork Cartwork from Brooklyn. And honestly, just watching her, if you didn't know her, you'd probably say she did have a background in dance just from how big all of her splits are. You can see that in her switch leap. She has a split split later. Coming up in this routine and even on floor, all of her jumps are very big and she just hits the full 180 on all of them. Well, I guess Brooklyn a split for a half reason right because there. when you watch her floor routine and or, or her routine here, um, and you see the expression in every little transition. So, absolutely, and on beam, that's really important to just make your routine flow. Good control on that back handspring. That's been very consistent for her this competition. And even her little piece of the dance, you never see her falter even a bit. And those are those split split. She always hits them just perfect. And a great stick. So my coach stepping over on the mat there just to make sure it doesn't slide. We have some difficulties with that in the past, so Really got to make sure it meets like this. Saw a mat slide for uh, East Brunswick earlier. We did so over on ball. It was a pretty dramatic ball. slide. It was Absolutely. So, you know, when I say it's very important the coach stands on the mat and you say, mm, I don't know how much can happen, <laughs> that is definitely something that can happen. It's, um, it's definitely a huge thing, and it's caused some girls to fall on a dismount or two. So it's always good to have somebody stand in there because it's not always on the gymnast, you know what I mean? Up next, we have Danica Svensson, another senior and another one of our captains, and the one who has maybe the disputed background, the disputed in, background dance. in dance. I can't say with full confidence that she is our in-house choreographer. She's choreographed quite a few of our girls' routines, and anytime somebody needs a little bit of dance in their routine, and they're like, you know, I want to change something, if you ever go to... If you ever go to... <laughs> I think the music's stopping there. <laughs> little, little bit of eerie <laughs> silence. <That's> yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, if you ever go to Coach Alexa about it, she'll tell you to go right to Danica because Danica always has you know, a little piece of dance in her back pocket. I've definitely asked her on a piece of choreo or two, and you really see that demonstrated in her dance, how everything is very big and full out. And I just love her mount. I think it's very dynamic. You see, that would make you think that she does have a background in dance. I mean, just watch your routine. Even if you didn't 
no. It's definitely something that can be assumed. But she has talked about it before. And you see, she gets even more <laughs> height than she needs to on that switch sleeve. She hits the perfect 180 and then bends her back leg just a little bit like she's going for a, for a ring jump. Great backhand spring. Oh, great gone. control. She had to switch that skill mid-season, so she really pulled through with that, that bit of flight. And again, just a full split on those, which is a really hard thing to achieve, especially when you're turning. A little bit of stumble on the straddle. Her weight was placed a little far back, but nothing she can't recover from. Oh, good recovery there. I love watching Danica's routines because even if she has a little bobble or if she has a little fall, she always takes it very lightheartedly. You'll see her smile or even every once in a while she falls, she'll laugh and just kind of give herself a second and then keep on going. And it's, it's really great to have that kind of energy that, you know, just knowing that this is not the end all be all. Saw a little scrunch of the face on that, that first fall there, but just a tad. First but and only fall, so. True. She definitely recovers quick. And next up is Isabel Yuzan, again, one of our sophomores. I can't wait to see what upgrade she brings in the upcoming years. This is someone I have not seen on Varsity Beam yet, so interesting to watch. She definitely has competed Varsity Beam. It's not... Uh, I'd say it's probably one of her main events. She's an all-around gymnast, but everybody has their special specialties. Issa pulled out a gorgeous 9091, I believe, at Skylands, which is a really great score to see, and she did place on that, so we were all very proud of her. Yeah, it definitely surprises me that I haven't seen her here. I don't think she's in any of the ones that we've broadcasted, but... Obviously, it doesn't mean she doesn't do it. So <laughs> again, lineups are fluid and just we constantly have a small changing. Size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so they are always kind of rotating around just to give everybody a chance to compete what they want to compete, which I think is a great way to do it. Gorgeous, effortless stake on that wolf three quarter, and she always connects her cat fulls. That's an extremely hard skill on B. Most girls don't do them. They usually have a cat half, cat half, just to have one more low level skill connection and she does a switch leap tuck full there which again just giving herself more and more bonus good connection on that cartwheel round off and a good stick usually the rule of thumb unless you're standing on the beam with one leg up for a while is that as long as your leg is in the air then it's still connected just saw a great back handspring and then a wolf split. Her dismount is a round off tuck, which she's had some issues with in the past, going a little sideways, but she's really straightened them out. And that was a really great routine for Misa. Super excited to see her score. Yeah, she definitely put together pretty solid, good flow as well. Absolutely. Didn't hesitate all that much ever, which is really a great thing in gymnastics. Keeps the routine moving and you know, less pauses is just more appealing to watch, and it's more of what the judges like to see. I believe it's Ava Sutphin. Up next on beam, again, she is a sophomore. She's definitely had some setbacks on beam this year, but she's really worked to make some changes and some tweaks and just overcome everything she needs to. Really a mark of a great gymnast. And again, she has a super dynamic mount. A unique mount is always a cool thing to see and a big way to open up a routine. I do not know how she does it. I'd break all of my toes if I did that mount. <laughs> This is a backhand spring step out, backhand spring step out. Bringing a little something back from next year just to get her that extra connection bonus. Super tight. 
You can tell she's very comfortable doing them. Going back to breaking all your toes, I think I would break all my toes if I did anything on the beam, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's completely understandable. I get that. Um, it's definitely something to train, and I know some coaches train for girls to, you know, have that strength, especially in their feet, because on beam it's super important to have that grip. That was a really incredible display to see there. She made up just all of that on the spot. She went for her split back tuck, didn't quite the get the connection, totally regrouped, just pulled out some choreo, connected a split jump to a wolf jump to get her that connection, and then did her back tuck for that bo bonus. And just straight into a gorgeous fist mount. That would be a cartwheel gainer full. Again, gainer fulls are not something you see usually until collegiate level. But the fact that she was just able to regroup and you know, completely <laughs> change your routine on spot was just incredible, especially under all that pressure without any coach guidance. Truly incredible. Man, it just speaks volumes to how good of a gymnast she is already at such a young age, so. And I think she's really pacing herself in a way that she'll be able to do this for, you know, as long as she needs to. I fully, fully believe that I'll see her doing college all four years if not anything more, so super excited to see where her career takes her. And, you know, I can't wait to <laughs> to watch as she keeps progressing and keeps working. And she does club alongside high school. Even though she tones down her club hours when she's on high school, she's constantly practicing. I will still remember the first day of tryouts, my coach turned to her and asked her, you know, Ava, how many hours of club did you already go to today? And she kind of smiled a little bit and looked away for a second, looked back at my coach and said, four, very shyly. And I was just like blown away by that already because that is her toning down her club hours. So that's super crazy that she can do all of that while being a balanced student. Yeah, for me, a lot of one, one of the main reasons why I ended up dropping club swimming was um, just to stay on top of my work. So bringing that up about Ava and her ability to stay on top of her work and still, you know, throw down a 9-3 and a 9-5, <laughs> go four hours of practice. And Definitely, yeah. It's pretty remarkable. I think to any student athletes, it's a super, super thing tough thing to balance I I'm not doing club at the moment and I haven't in any of my high school seasons to you know stay on top of my work especially as and you see Nicole just did the same thing I couldn't even tell she did her split jumps and connected it to her wolf and then did her split tuck and a gorgeous cartwheel round off yeah it's really incredible in any sport to see any student athletes or just people who are super involved in anything to always be on top of it especially when you're in those higher level courses it's tough but you know you can tell that their worth that ethic is really great a great handstand full off beam I love that dismount that was a really nice routine from Nicole Pagano there to follow up Ava Sutphins I think we're doing pretty good at this me from what I can from what I can tell and from what I can see all we have left is floor and that tends to be a pretty strong central event that's why it's always last. It's whenever we're home, we do Olympic order. But even if we can't do Olympic order, we almost always make sure to put our floor at last. You know, the other team that's got to come in and go against you guys, you have to have <laughs> your top gymnast be over nine, over nine five, even if you won't even have a chance. So absolutely, <laughs> and they're. Uh, they're a strong team. I'm watching some of the girls take some one touches over on floor right now, and I'm definitely impressed with what I see. So, even though we don't have, you know, a hundred percent full lineup today, I don't think we definitely have some strong people competing, and I think we have a great shot at winning. Nine three nine four. Great score especially on beam, super tough event. You know, the amount of wobbles and falls aside, having to do everything on 
it's a beam is four inches for anybody who didn't know and it's really just wood with the covering so having to do everything on that little plank of wood and then when you go to do it in competition your main goal is kind of just staying on the beam so you kind of disregard some of the form things you may have learned in in practice so it's a it's a super tough event a great that save on her cartwheel save. there wow <laughs> cartwheel round off we really it stress the importance of saving everything even in practice you know you want to practice the way you compete and a huge thing in gymnastics is being able to save your skills if you can't save your skills then you got to make sure you can't wobble and that's <laughs> even tougher so we see some really great saves in this sport Another big save there. And a great dismount. I've said it once and I'll say it again. I think the most nerve-wracking part of the sport is waiting for the judge to present to you. <laughs> Once you get on the apparatus and you're <clears throat> when you're starting to do skills that you're comfortable with and you get to know your routine, then it all kind of it all kind of dissolves. But standing there is when all the stress builds up. So it really takes you know some kind of method to make it so that you don't psych yourself out in that moment. Usually when I'm standing waiting for an event, I look at one of my teammates and I dance a little bit as I have doing have been doing all stream next to George. <laughs> um, so it's always good to find a way to kind of combat that. Wow, yeah, every once in a while great I display of flexibility right. there. Every once in a while I look to my right and Callie's like, you know, quite a bit further down than she <laughs> normally stands. <laughs> yeah. She's doing some dance or something. <laughs> I, it's a good way to de-stress at competitions. It makes everything a little more fun. And I'm usually not typically the best at standing skill still, so. <laughs> it's a it's a good little release of energy. That was a super cool skill. I honestly couldn't give you the typical name. A lot of times it's called like a TikTok because you kind of go over and then you go back. I Not something I've seen this season or I believe in the past. This gymnast definitely has a lot of flexibility is really showcasing that in this beam routine. It's very important in gymnastics to play on your strengths, especially in your dance. So you really got to cater to what you're good at. Um, and you see that in a lot of flexibility routines, especially. And it's always super fun to see what cool elements you can incorporate with that flexibility. And a great front layout dismount. Pretty common dismount in high school gymnastics. You see it quite a bit, but it's I think it's super fun to watch. I don't really see it anywhere else in club or anything. So. I'm a big fan. So, just awaiting the score. And then we'll have some more going here. Don't have the, the JV to pan to right now. That's the. We're really trying to keep it moving in this meet, so. and <laughs> I think the judges are doing a pretty good job with it. Um, but 
you know, there's a lot that goes into scoring, and you'll see in any varsity competition, there will always be two judges judging. If you know, if ever anybody misses something, then you always have another person to to kind of vouch for you. But each judge has their own score, and they talk a little bit and they compromise a little bit, and you know, there's a lot of discussion that happens between judges. So it does definitely take a bit in between girls to go and um, you know just to get everything situated and sorted out on some routines more than others if you have you know some interesting skills I'd say they've been pretty amazingly fast to come out with those scores absolutely it's a it's a lot to think about and I've seen I've sat next to the to a judge on a judge's table on more than one occasion they have this incredible shorthand it's completely illegible to anybody who is not a judge <laughs> because you can't write down every skill that's a gorgeous connection. One of our girls does that. Front walk over back handspring. Great, great connection there. Very, very nice flow. The judges have this shorthand. You see them looking down and up and down and up super fast because they got to, you know, make sure they're writing in the same spot and not over what they just wrote. But it's completely legible to me. It's completely legible, legible to my coaches. The only people who know how to read it are the judges. And it's both no, notations of what skills girls do and how they are executed and that's a lot to write down in a little second when you also need to be looking back up at you know the gymnast to see what the rest of the routine is going to look like you can't really miss anything it's a good routine there from east brunswick very solid yeah super tight on our skills really great to see i believe this is competitor number four i think it's four I'm not the best at keeping track, as I've found from doing this on more than one occasion. I'm usually mistaken, so it is good to have somebody to check with, um, but I believe this is New Brunswick's number four. On a completely unrelated note, I'm a really huge fan of their Leos. Every team kind of has that unique aspect, um, and it, I think it's kind of a bit of a personality of the team. I love our Leos per personally. We have two. We're sporting a different one than you guys normally see today. We usually try to wear it for a few throughout the season just to get some variety in. Bit of a different look. I was going to say, I thought it was different today. You would be correct. Great observation. <laughs> um, yeah, every Wow, every that once one in a looks while. different than the last <laughs> stop, one. <laughs> stop, stop. You're right. No, you're right, though. Um, and it's, it's our leads from a few years ago, but we like to sport them every once in a while just to get some change and some variety. But um, we're big on, you know, every, everybody has to have the same of everything. In our warm-ups, you'll see, ooh, gorgeous. Wow. Not a skill you see on beam quite a lot. Looks like she teleported there for a second <laughs> after that. I, ooh, 8-8, eight, 8-9, eight, eight, great score. I couldn't even tell you the technical name on some of these. It just, you know, shows what I know. And another one of those front walk over back handsprings. It looked like a switch straddle. Not something you see all that much. But, uh, yeah, if you look at our warm-ups, every piece of it is <laughs> completely identical. We all have the same, uh, you know, leggings and warm-up jackets and Leos and slides, even down to the socks. We all have matching socks. <laughs> um, so every piece of it needs to be in play for everybody to wear something. If one person doesn't have the socks that day, nobody wears the socks. So it's very, very particular. Great straddle, or split half. Wow, really incredible scale. Again, just a demonstration of control and flexibility. And great pike jumps. Pike jumps are not something you see all that often. They're a super hard jump to be to be uh, given the same amount of difficulty value as some of the other jumps that are maybe a little easier. So pike jumps is not a very common one. That was a... It was a really good routine. Really right good there. routine. Super solid. It looked almost flawless. I mean, there's maybe one or two little bobbles in there in the entire routine. Yeah, it was super fun to watch. Really, so really interesting there. Judging by the fact that the whole, almost the whole team just left and slid over <laughs> the floor, that might have been their last one. Uh, it's a great possibility. Uh, I believe they're done. You know, not every lineup. I'm sure they had five, and I just miscounted, but not every lineup has to have four girls because um, when it comes down to it, only the top three scores from each event contribute to the team's final score. So 
minimum, you have to have three, but it's always good to have five. Or when you get to uh, bigger competitions, as in sectionals and states, I believe you only get four, but it's good to have that, you know, those few girls as backup. Little rotation over the floor now. You might see some of the girls take one touches. That was a 9-5. I'm missing the other score, but 9-5 just by itself is a an incredible score and I think you I'm very sure much deserve that. Similar, so. Oh I'm sure yeah. A nine five and an eight oh <laughs> almost never something you see. <laughs> Usually rule of thumb is it's like about max like point five within each other. You almost never see more than that. The judges are usually pretty similar in their scoring. And, you know, gymnastics is subjective, so it's really up to the eyes, but um usually judges are pretty pretty similar in their scores. It's very rare to see, like you said, like a 9-5 and an 8-0. That'd be, uh, sound like someone's getting robbed there. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> there's, if that happens, there's definitely some favoritism going on or something, but um, good thing it's never something you see. So here's East Brunswick's first competitor on the floor. This will be the second pass right here. Where's your friend, that guy? <laughs> it's not here today. <laughs> Some good execution there to start out from East Brunswick. All right, I'm going to be joined by Olivia here for floor. A little bit more expertise here than, than I can offer. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of East Brunswick's first competitor's routine? Um, East Brunswick was really good. We've both had a really great meet so far. It's had its ups and downs, and their first floor routine was really great. So now we're on to the second one. This gymnast had a pretty remarkable um, beam routine. Yeah. Basically zero bobbles, one, one maybe mm -hmm. very small one. So I believe the score is a 9-5. Great score. Front tuck, front pike. A front tuck step out, round off handspring, back layout as her second pass. A lot of power in that. And a 8-9 and 8-7 as a score for the first gymnast. A very strong score. Yes. Especially for the first one to go. Mm -hmm. And the last pass here. Round off, back handspring, back handspring, back layout.
Another great routine from East Brunswick. So we'll see who comes up next. Sounds like it might be Anna. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe that would be, uh, if that was who went that. No, yeah, that is Zanna. <laughs> She's going now. <laughs> First pass here, a front full. This Brunswick in sync with the claps there. Hmm. And now the second pass. Round off, handspring, back half. Round off handspring, back layout for the third pass. So I believe this will be the fourth competitor for yeah. East Brunswick. So far, so good on floor. They've, they've looked really strong. Yeah. Put together a couple nice scores to start out. And see if they can keep it going here. First pass here, a round off, backhand spring, back full. And a score of 8-7 and 9-0. Oh. Front hand spring front layout, front layout for the second pass. This 
some great dance here. Last pass here, a round off back handspring, back full. That one's gonna score high with the way that was executed. So it looks like East Brunswick is only going to run for. It's either that or we have things Just called one touches. Yeah, a couple one touches. Yeah. Yeah, it does not look like East Brunswick has a fifth competitor on floor. So now it's Central's turn. Cell's going to start maybe? Or Yeah, I think so. Is it Nicole? Yeah. I think it's no. Brooklyn. That's a new pass for Nicole, the front handspring front full. She's been nailing it in practice, so I'm excited to see how this turns out. Nine oh and nine one for East Brunswick on floor. Brooklyn starting out with a round off back handspring back full for her first pass. And Brooklyn is one of our seniors, so this is her last time competing here at 100 and Central. Last home meet of the season. That must be a bittersweet feeling. Yeah. Front handspring, front tuck, forward roll for the second pass. Last pass, round off back hand, spring back layout. Well, that's a strong start for Central on floor right there. Great routine. Next up, we have Danica. <laughs> Central's going to adopt that a little <laughs> bit there. <laughs> Danica is also a senior, so this is her last floor routine, too.
Brooklyn got a 8-8 and an 8-8 on floor. Great way to start off. Danica. Front hand spring, front pike, front tuck. Just landed a little short on the front tuck. Now for the second pass, a oh, round off backhand spring back layout. And now just for the last pass here, front tuck, step out, round off, back tuck. Great job. And a great routine from Danica. Next up, I think we have Callie. Yeah. Yep. Let's see if they do the name thing here. Mm. So after a fair amount of deliberation from the judges, <laughs> off Cali goes. Starting off the routine with a back one and a half. And an 8-2 and an 8-4 for Danica. Who's still just coming back from a toe injury, so a great job in her routine from that. Next pass for Callie, front tuck, front tuck. Perfect. <laughs> and for the last pass here, Callie does a back full. Perfect. Beautiful routine from Callie. You're very strong. Looked like pretty much flawless. Next up is Nicole, who is also a senior.
a little bit quicker that time from the judges. <laughs> And from Cali, the score is a 9-1 and a 9-2. Awesome score. Nicole's first pass back, one and a half punch front. Beautiful, stuck first pass. Great way to start off her routine. Now for the second pass, this is new, a front hand spring front full. Great job. And now for Nicole's last pass, a round off one and a half. Beautiful. And a great routine from Nicole. I do feel like Central's always pretty much lights out yeah. with floor at the end. It's a great event to end on. And Ava is our last competitor on floor today. And she will wrap up the meet. Wrap up the season, or regular season that is. Yeah. The Here judges goes. finish the score there. For Ava's first pass, she does a round off one and a half front pike, done beautifully. Now on to the second pass, which is a front handspring front full. Very similar to Nicole's routine. So much height on that. And for Nicole, a 9-3 and a 9-3-5. Wonderful scores. And the last pass for Ava on floor, a round off one and a half. If I'm, yeah, beautiful. And that's a wrap. So that'll be it right there for the meet and the regular season for 100 and Central Gymnastics. Thank you so much for your words, Olivia, and to everyone, a good night.